Welcome to the 7th election of American history. It occurred in 1812 from October 30th up to December 2nd. Incumbent President James Madison had a tough decision. Tensions between America and Britain had gotten even worse and war was on the horizon. One of the first actions he took was via the Macomb Bill. It lifted the embargo and tried to relieve tensions but wouldn't last long and would be reinstated. Napoleon saw an opportunity and took advantage. Napoleon seen Britain and America's relations worsened, made the continental blockade even more effective, isolating them completely. While all of this occurred, a lot of things happened, like the occupation of Western Florida by Madison. Since both Madison and Jefferson saw it as rightfully American, since they believed it was part of the Louisiana Purchase, Democratic Republicans were happy by this acquisition, but Federalists thought it was unconstitutional. Also, the first bank of the US closed due to indifference in 1811, and this was one of Hamilton's projects he did during his time. In 1811, the Little Belt Affair happened. It was a naval battle that held heavy casualties to the British. This gave hope to Americans that they could defeat Britain in the future. Also, Tecumseh's war was a war between the natives supported by Britain against the Americans. The natives were led by Shawnee leader Tecumseh, an icon that would lead the battle against American expansionism. Also, Massachusetts Governor Jerry became known for developing gerrymandering. After he redrew his state's districts to favor the Democratic Republicans in early 1812. Also, fun fact, Louisiana became a state and could vote for this election for the very first time. Another major development happened with British Prime Minister Percival. He was assassinated on May 11, 1812, by a merchant who was angry at the government and the chaotic aftermath didn't help anyone. With war becoming more and more likely on the horizon, during this time there was a new faction in America called the Warhawks led by people like House Speaker from Kentucky, Henry Clay, also by John C. Calhoun, who was a representative from South Carolina. Both of them would be staunch leaders that fiercely wanted to go to war against Britain. And at last, they were able to convince James Madison, and he signed and formally declared war against Britain on June 18, 1812. For the election, Democratic Republicans had a couple of nominees. First nominee for president, was of course James Madison. Another one was Vice President George Clinton and New York politician DeWitt, nephew of George Clinton. Four people mainly running to be Vice Presidents. They were John Langdon, New Hampshire Governor, and lastly, Elbridge Gary, Governor of Massachusetts. In the end, they nominated Madison again, but this time with Northerner Jerry for Vice President. By 1812, the Northern Democratic Republicans had grown tired of the Southern grip over their party. They wanted George Clinton to go against Madison, but he passed away before the election season. Instead, the Northern faction nominated a fusion ticket with New York City Mayor DeWitt Clinton for president, alongside Federalists from Pennsylvania and Attorney General Jared Ingersoll. Rufus King wanted to run in a 1v1 versus Madison, but the Federalists weren't a key figure in this election. They also thought about running Justice Marshall, but Marshall was more influential where he was at already. These Southern Democratic Republicans were still somewhat strong, and the propaganda against the British helped, while for the Northern Democratic Republicans, DeWitt was a good choice, but flip-flopped depending on where he was campaigning at. And the winner was... James Madison won re-election staying as the fourth president in American history. James Madison barely won with 128 electoral votes in a really close race against fellow Democrat Republican DeWitt. And Albridge Gary became the fifth vice president in American history, while DeWitt Clinton came close with a respectable 89 electoral votes in 1812. This race was a nail-biter compared to the previous ones and did way better than what the Federalists had done in recent elections. In the Senate, the Democratic Republicans expanded their majority, with at least 19 needed for a majority. For the House, Democratic Republicans won again, with 106 seats, 14 over the threshold. New Democratic Republican Henry Clay became Speaker, and was the seventh Speaker, after Varnum became a Senator. 
Madison took his second oath of office on Thursday, March 4, 1813, within the capital. The War of 1812 would heighten, becoming extremely impactful. And thus, the seventh election of American history came to an end. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned for the next video.